Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to uh, multiply show you how to multiply these two trinomials. And this is not going to be fun. This is going to be a lot of work. And, but I want to be able to show you a way that can make this um, hopefully a little bit simpler um, in when, when multiplying a trinomial times a trinomial, because that's a lot of multiplication that's going to be going on. Now, one thing we can always look at this as distributive property. One, I need to multiply the 1 times every single one of these terms, the 4x times every single one of these terms, and the negative x squared times every one of those terms. Or you could do it the other way as well. Um, so if you want to do it that method, that's perfectly fine, but I see a lot of students making mistakes, as well as myself, um, and kind of getting everything confused and it's kind of too much work. So what I like to do is always think of the product. Whenever you're multiplying, think of the product as uh, your area. So if I did 5 times 4, we know 5 times 4 is 20. Well, we can also think of that as a length of one side of a rectangle and the width of the other side, or a width, and therefore the area is 20. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a nice big box here. And what I'm going to do is going to, here's going to be my rectangle. Now, inside of this rectangle, um, rather than, I'm not multiplying numbers, I'm multiplying uh, polynomials. So I want to make sure I can separately represent each one of the terms. So I'm going to break up each side into how many terms I have, which in this case is three. Then all I'm simply going to do is take one polynomial and write it on one side, and then take the other polynomial and write it on the other side. So now what you can see is I have like kind of my length and my width. So to find the product, what it, to find this total area, what I'm going to do is simply just take the area of each one of these squares and then add it up, right? Because for instance, I could also do something like this. If I did 2 and 2, right? Because you could break up 4 into 2 plus 2, right? So then I did 5 times 2, which is 10. 5 times 2, which is 10. Well, 10 plus 10 is equal to 20, which is the exact same answer. So it works if we break it up. So now we just need to figure out the area. So to find the area here, I have negative x squared times x squared. That's going to be a negative x to the fourth. And then here, I'm, the, the length is always going to be negative x squared. So negative x squared now times negative 8x is going to be a positive 8x cubed. And negative x squared times, three, or times positive 3 is a negative 3x squared. Now we move on to this row. So I have 4x times x squared is going to be 4x cubed. 4x times negative 8x is going to be a negative 32x squared. 4x uh, times 3 is going to be 12x. x squared times 1 is x squared. Uh, negative 8x times 1 is going to be a negative 8x. And 1 times 3 is equal to 3. So you can see I did all this math, and everything is now nice and neat in these nice boxes, which I like. And what I also like about it is when I'm trying to add everything up, I have my like terms on these diagonals. So now when I want to be able to, when determining my final answer, all I simply am doing is just going to be combining these diagonals. Now there's nothing to combine with negative x to the fourth, so I'll write that out there. So negative x to the fourth. Here I have 4x squared x cubed and positive 8x cubed, which is going to leave me with 12x cubed. Then over here I have uh, x squared minus 32x squared minus 3x squared. So that'd be a negative 35. So that'd be a negative 34x squared. And then I have negative 8x and positive 12x, which is a positive 4x, and then plus 3. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you multiply a trinomial by a trinomial. Thanks.